Hey, Adela, how old are you? Are you eight months old? Good one, Adela. Any more? What else? <laughs> Do you like hanging out at Dada's office? You like getting your your running nose? On? That was pretty good. Welcome to episode 7 of the Smart Alec Podcast. Today is Friday, March 15th. It's day 71 of the legislative session, and there are only 49 days left. I'm your host, Majority Leader Alec Garnett, and with me as always is my aide and producer, Ethan Black. Ethan, what's up, buddy? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. How are you doing? I'm good, man. We are here with Adela my eight-month-old daughter. She's glad to be here. This is her first time at the Capitol. She went down to the governor's office for a meeting. She was on the floor of the House. She was hanging out while we were interviewing Representative Herod. Speaking of which, we have a great interview with Representative Herod from Denver about criminal justice reform and all the work that she's doing on that important uh, policy area. And we'll talk about this week's bomb cyclone snowpocalypse, which shut down the city. But not the state senate. <laughs> no. <laughs> Sensitive subject. So we are here with a Representative Leslie Herod from House District 8. You were elected in 2016. You are the chair of the Finance Committee. You are the vice chair of the Judiciary Committee. You are the vice chair of the Legal Services Committee. Thanks so much for joining us. Happy to be here today. So how do you like being in the legislature? Well, it's been a, quite a ride, I'll say, but it's definitely one of the best things um, that I could do. I'm very blessed to be able to be in this position and to be able to work with so many good friends like yourself. We've known each other for a long time, and watching you serve and watching your leadership has been inspiring. Yeah, no, we have been friends for such a long time. Um, it's great to have friends in the legislature, and I just like fighting by your side because you're always on the right side of history, and you are leading the way. And I thought maybe we'd talk a little bit about some of the issues that you really have taken the lead on around criminal justice reform. Yeah, I'm pretty passionate about criminal justice reform. When I was running for office initially, um, I was told to leave it out of my platform, um, and I refused. And there's a few reasons for that. One is because, you know, criminal justice reform is so important for urban communities, for communities of color, um, for rural Colorado. It's really an issue that bridges the gaps and divides between so many because no one wants to be unfairly persecuted. Um, no one wants to wants to feel like they um, aren't getting justice or that they're over-policed. Um, and so this is why I work on this issue, um, and it's something that's so important. But it's also so faceted, right? So it's really not just about one thing. It's about what is the ecosystem that we're creating in Colorado? What does criminal justice reform really look like? And it's everything from reentry to the overcrowding in our jails and our prison population management. Um, what do you think about this, baby? Anna Dillis here. Anna Dillis here. So what, so that's no, that's all right. And so you. You know, one of the issues um, that you have worked on a couple, almost every single year that you have been here, but it finally looks like it's on a path uh, to being signed by the governor, is ban the box. Yeah. And talk about the importance of that to our community and, um, you know, and sort of the journey of, of where you started with this uh, bill and, and kind of where it is now. Yeah, I mean, it's so funny because ban the box is one of those issues that I've actually worked on for years, right? So there have been a lot of folks in the activist communities who have been talking about ban the box. What does ban the box mean? Ban the box is simply taking the little checkbox off of a job application that asks if you have a prior criminal history. You know, in Colorado, there are over a million people who are in Colorado's criminal record database. Um, no one even knows what criminal history means. Is that a traffic ticket? Is that a felony? I mean, where does that even lie? And while people want to be honest and truthful on their applications, most know that if they check that box, they'll automatically be, dis be disqualified from employment and even an interview. In Colorado, we have chosen a way forward that kind of 
allows the employer to still have the option and the choice of who they choose to hire, but also takes that box off of the initial application so that someone can, you know, put their shoulders back, tell their real story, tell who they are and say, I am ready to get to work and let the employer make the decision from there. Yeah, that's exactly. I mean, that's great. And what I love about it is it's about second chances. It's about not putting in artificial barriers to people, um, you know, getting their life back on track. And and the statistics show on our recidivism rate that if we don't um, really help people assimilate back into society and, and land back on their feet, then they're just going to be back in the Department of Corrections and we wouldn't have solved the problem at all. And you really have taken the lead on Department of Corrections reform, making sure that we're not overpopulating our prisons um, and really trying to crack down on that. Talk a little bit about how far we've come since since you've been here in the legislature and how far we have to go. Yeah, I mean, look, our uh, Department of Correction budget is over a million dollars at this point in Colorado. Or, I'm sorry, a billion. B <laughs> Wrong letter. Billion. Yeah. Billion with a B. <laughs> with a B. Um, and that's busted, right? So that's a broken system and we need to fix it. And there is is this revolving door. Someone gets out, they go back in. What do they do to go back in? They're creating, they're, they're committing more crimes. And so if we want to have a justice system or Department of Corrections that really is rehabilitating, we've got to get people back to work. Um, and we have to make sure that the Department of Corrections is adequately utilizing all of its resources. Prison beds are one. Community corrections is another thing. Intensive inmate supervision is another thing. Ensuring that inmates have access to mental health, which sometimes doesn't need to come from behind a prison wall but should happen in the community. And so we are looking at, you know, what is driving people into the Department of Corrections right now. It's quite frankly simple possession, which is something that we need to work on. Um, but then what's happening when they're, when they're getting out? Um, and so in Colorado, I will say that we have come a long way because the conversation has literally shifted from one that was a few Democrats who were very progressive speaking alone at the well around this issue to a chorus of House members on both sides of the aisle saying we have to do something to rein in this budget. DOC needs to take responsibility um, for its actions in this matter. And what are we going to do to move the state in the right direction? and allow these resources to be utilized for something that moves Colorado forward. And to the DOC legislative liaison, Aaron Greco, uh, we know you've been on the job for like two days, but uh, you should probably come talk to Representative Herod and myself. I look forward to talking to you, Aaron. Shout out to you, Aaron. Um, You've you've led on a bunch of other issues, you know, for, you know, you just introduced and started moving through some uh, bond and bail reform uh, legislation yesterday. You guys had a great press conference. You got one of the bills um, out of committee. Talk a little bit about the importance of um, uh, talk a little bit about the importance of those and then talk about should we be providing and I'm, you know, I'm always sort of sensitive, and I think the answer is yes, but should we pr- be providing um, feminine products to prisoners in um, jail? I like it. All right. So yesterday was kind of a big day in the Judiciary Committee. Um, we had a bill up that really looked at bail reform. And I got to tell you, shout out to Elizabeth Epps, activist with Colorado Freedom Fund, um, and so many others nationally in the movement, Color of Change, Common, John Legend, who have said we really need to look at this cash bail system. It is broken. Um, poverty is not a crime. And you shouldn't have to languish in jail just because you can't afford to get out. So last night, we or I'm sorry, um, this past Last week in judiciary, we actually moved forward a bill to say that if you commit a low-level crime, lower than a misdemeanor, I mean, we're talking traffic offenses, we're talking sleeping on a park bench, your grass growing too high. In some places in Colorado, that is a jailable offense. And if you can't pay the $100 bond to get out, you have to languish in jail. And people are. And so what we said last night was those offenses are no longer eligible for cash bail. Um, We do not need these folks sitting in our jail taxpayers do not need to pay for this um, and we need to find a better way and so surprisingly enough after great testimony from those including the attorney general for Colorado Phil Weiser um, but sheriffs and and DAs and law enforcement officers we decided that that was the right thing to do that we need to get rid of cash bill for that those crimes um, and it passed out of committee unanimously 
Democrats so, and Republicans. And you Republicans. You, could, you should have seen my face, Majority Leader. I, I, I mean, it. you've seen that face I've made before, but I, my <laughs> head exploded. I was like that, that emoji with the, uh, the exploding head, right? Yeah, like, right. I, I was shocked, but quite frankly, it is a common sense solution. This makes sense. It's a measured way forward, but it's going to change the lives of so many um, who have really, you know, who have or will languish, would have languished in jail just because they couldn't pay $100 to get out. That is awesome. Well, I'm just so proud to be your colleague. I, I, you know, I am following your lead when it comes to these criminal justice reforms issues, and I think you are helping lead Colorado to be at the forefront of these reforms, and I think other states around the country are going to be traveling here uh, to see what we've done, and thanks so much for being on the Smart Alec podcast. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. I'm glad to be here with you and Adela, um, and I look forward to having way more conversations as we move through the upcoming weeks with budget um, and with our final, final days of bills. That's awesome. Thanks so much. Thank you. So this week we actually got our first ever uh, podcast fan voicemail. So uh, thank you very much, Max Stroer. How cool is that? That's awesome. Special thanks to Max. Um, you know, he was talking about, uh, he, he just corrected us um, when we were uh, referring to Coloradans who, ran for, who have run for president in the past. Yeah, so apparently last week we said that Gary Hart was the most recent Coloradan to run for office uh, when, because, you know, Hickenlooper just announced there's speculation Michael Bennett might do something. And then uh, it was actually Tom Tancredo in uh, 2008 had an unsuccessful bid for the Republican nomination. So, uh, Max, thank you for listening and thank you for correcting us. Thank you, Max. And to everybody else who's listening, don't hesitate to reach out to us via Twitter, or you can just shoot Ethan or myself an email, and, uh, and, and please tune in. So let's talk about the Bomb Cyclone. First of all, I think Bomb Cyclone is a great name. Do you think that, um, I think the best tweet I saw, one of the best, I've, there's been many good tweets this week, but one of the best ones was from Representative Matt Gray. Shout out to Matt for uh, his commentary on the, wor- on the name Bomb Cyclone. He said there's probably a bunch of uh, Generation Z hipsters sitting in a basement uh, coming up with a new band named Bomb Cyclone. Uh, I will buy their album. Probably I'll stream it, but um, yeah, I want to be get a job as the next guy who can name crazy weather events. Like we have bomb cyclone, we have a dynamite tornado, we have nuclear typhoon. Well, um, and then you name every hurricane that's actually out there. True. I want to give a quick shout out to uh, you know all our members of the state patrol and to uh, Corporal Groves, who lost his life, say, you know, trying to help somebody who slid mm-hmm. out uh, during the, the, the snow apocalypse. And, um, you know, that's the fourth state trooper that we've lost in four years mm. outside the vehicle. And it's just, it's just really sad. You know, there's so many men and women who are out there serving and who are really heroes and for everything they do. So thoughts go out to Groves' family and, and friends and loved ones. Yeah, absolutely. And to, you know, all the people in our state patrol, I'm sure they're all feeling it. Um, and uh, to continue to do the work that you do, um, you know, especially in this kind of historic snow season, um, it's not unnoticed. And yeah. uh, we thank you. It is. One thing I do want to point out is that, Ethan, um, I think we probably gave away some strategy to the Senate Republicans last week. We talked about the yeah. Title 12 bill, and you mentioned how it's the longest bill in the hi- – I guess we talked about how it's the longest bill Yeah, it is the, the longest history. bill in the history of Colorado. And the- so we were talking about before it went uh, to the floor of the Senate, and so I think the Republicans must have listened to our podcast because on the, floor of the, on the floor of the Senate this week, they asked for the bill to be read at length. They did, and then what ended up happening was – they had the reader in the Senate who had laryngitis, so they were forcing this poor guy to read a bill. He read it for three hours. Did he really have laryngitis? Yeah. It was terrible. 
All I know is that it was going to take 60 hours for one person to read the Title 12 bill at length. So they brought in computers that have a program to read it. They brought in five computers to do it. It got yeah. done in like six hours. But it then led to the Republicans suing Senate President Leroy Garcia. With an ex parte hearing. Uh, with an ex parte hearing. Yeah. Um, and so, again... You know, it's just one of those things where there's so many smart aleck listeners out there. We got to be careful that we don't give the Republican uh, Senate members good ideas like that. This week's HD2 Business of the Week is Platt Park Brewing Company, one of the many terrific breweries in Denver and in HD2. They have great beer and an awesome tasting room where they host events and a rotating slate of food trucks. Platt Park Brewing Company is a member of the Colorado Brewers Guild, uh, and the Guild had a really great day at the Capitol about a month ago. So, if you're looking for some good beer and a nice place to hang out, check out Platt Park Brewing Company on 1875 South Pearl Street in Denver and HD2. Thanks for listening, everyone. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and uh, write a comment about the Smart Alec podcast. Help us make it to the tops of the chart. I am glad to have special guest Adela, my eight-month-old, with us today. And special thanks to Leslie Herod for coming on and talking about all of her efforts around uh, criminal justice reform. Absolutely. See you next week. See ya. See ya.